Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Anand and you're watching Physics Craze. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then do subscribe it here to get the quality content regularly and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you'll get notified every time I upload a video. So in this video, I'll be going to talk about some of the chart density and uh, some uh, basic questions related to it. So without wasting too much time, let's get started. So we'll start with chart density. So there are three kinds of chart density, linear, surface and volume. So what is in by linear chart density? It means let's consider we have a rod in some of the axis, one axis only, and we have distributed some charge over it. So we'll say this kind of distribution as linear charge distribution. And this linear chart density, uh, we generally denote it by lambda. In most of the question, you will directly have lambda. It means it is a linear chart density. Now, how do we represent lambda? Lambda can be written as charge divided length, charge divided by length. And we can write this formula directly when lambda is uniform. In the question, if it is given that lambda is uniformly distributed, so we can directly write lambda equals to charge over length. And the length would be in any direction, x direction, y direction or z direction. But if the charge distribution is not given whether it is uniform or not, we can directly use this term, the second formula, which is lambda equals to dq over dl. Now this dl would be dx if the distribution in x direction, dy if the distribution is y direction and dz if the distribution is in z direction. So according to the question, we'll represent dl as dx, dy or dz. Now the main term is if charge distribution is uniform, it is given that the charge distribution is uniform, but lambda is not given. So we can combine these two formulas and we can write dq over dl equals to q by l. It is very easy. See, uh, we can say if the charge distribution is uniform in this rod, so we can say the total charge divided by the total length of this rod will be equal to the small charge in this small length we can say that because charge is equally distributed so this ratio will be equal always now we'll move ahead with surface charge density surface charge density is represented by sigma this is called sigma and we can directly uh, show from the above step that if sigma is uniform we can write charge divided by area sigma can be written as dq by da if the charge distribution is not uniform or in all cases whether it is uniform or non-uniform now the uh, discussion will be same uh, as like our linear charge density if charge distribution is given uniformly and sigma is not given so we can again write this relation this ratio that charge spreaded over all area would be equal to small charge spreaded in small area we can say that and dA can be written as dx into dy, dy into dz, dx into dz according to the plane in case of Cartesian coordinate and in case of polar coordinate we'll write r dr d theta and in case of spherical polar coordinate, cylindrical polar coordinate for all of the different types we'll use dA accordingly. Now the third is volume charge density. Volume charge density is represented by rho. And it means that the charge distributed over a volume, if we have a sphere, solid sphere and the charge distributed inside and outside and on the surface of sphere, we'll say that it is a volume charge density. It is given by charge divided by area for uniform case and dq by dv in all cases. We can use this relation in all cases. Now the next point is if charge distribution is uniform and rho is not given, so accordingly as previous cases we can use this uh, ratio charge spreaded over volume is equals to small charge in small volume now density of a point charge if in a space we have a point charge here let's consider it is q and it is at place x naught y naught z naught so how can we represent its density now we are talking about space that's why we are representing it by rho so we can say that 
for all values of x y z in all space excluding x not y not z not there is no charge so we'll write that charge distribution as zero but at x not y not z not we can write the charge distribution as infinite we can uh, represent it using dirac delta function also we know that if you haven't studied it then uh, you can go through from hk das or griffith anywhere you will uh, understand how we can represent any function using dirac delta now this is the representation of a charge in a space only so we can represent it as q dirac delta x minus x not y minus y not z minus z not it represent that at x equals to x not y equals to y not and z equals to z not will have some charge plus q it, it is uh, also very important for just so if you want to study it then uh, you should uh, follow griffith and uh, you can have some of the examples also there so let us move ahead with some of the examples now we have infinite long wire having charge density lambda here see lambda is given so what we have we have lambda equals to lambda naught divided by z square plus a square so now if z is included here so we can understand that charge is uh, spread over z axis and uh, lies along z axis from minus infinity to infinity it means there is a wire which is uh, lied along z axis and that wire has length from minus infinity to plus infinity and we have spread the charge over the wire from minus infinity to plus infinity now what we have to calculate we have to calculate total charge on the wire how much charge is on the wire so uh, for that we'll proceed with a uh, linear charge density the formula is for any case we can use lambda as dq over dl but here we have z axis so we'll write dz and here we'll have lambda not divided by z square plus a square now rest is very easy so we can write dq as lambda not and in there dz divided by z square plus a square so capital q can be written as integration of dq so we'll write q as integration of dq it means integration of lambda not dz divided by z square plus a square and what is the limit for z we have the limit for z minus infinity to plus infinity so we can put it here and the q net or the capital q can be written as lambda not and uh, in integration we'll have plus minus infinity to plus infinity dz over z square plus a square z square plus a square and we know this kind of integration so we can write lambda not and multiply by 1 over a tan inverse z by a and the limit would be limit would be minus infinity to plus infinity now we can write here lambda not by a and here we'll have tan inverse tan inverse infinity minus of tan inverse minus infinity now tan inverse infinity it is pi by 2 and tan inverse minus infinity is minus pi by 2 and this minus this minus would be plus so pi by 2 plus pi by 2 would be pi so we'll have net charge on the wire would be lambda naught pi divided by a so this kind of question uh, it's been asked in uh, one of the exam one of the year in jam also so this is very easy you just have to know the basic rules of integration so we'll move ahead with the next question now we have area we have a triangular sheet in the diagram the vertices are we can say at 0 comma 0 at a comma 0 and at 0 comma 2 a and has surface charge density sigma equals to alpha x y see here we have the relation of uh, charge density sigma equals to alpha x y and we know that sigma is for surface charge density we can write sigma as dq over d a dq over d a and here on the right hand side we'll have alpha x y so here we have x and y axis so we can write d a as dx into d y dx into d y so we'll write dq as alpha x y and d a we can write dx into d y so what we have to calculate we have to calculate total charge on sheet so from the previous one we can say total charge or q net can be written as integration of dq and integration of dq is alpha x y dx into dy but here i have that uh, triangular sheet in uh, x y plane 
सो वी कैन राइट द इक्वेशन ऑफ द लाइन्स विच इज मेकिंग दैट ट्राइंगल सो हियर वी कैन राइट दिस इज द लाइन विच इज वाई इक्वल्स टू जीरो दिस इज द लाइन विच इज एक्स इक्वल्स टू जीरो एंड दिस थर्ड लाइन दिस वन इफ यूल सी लेट मी यूज अनदर पेन so you can easily identify this third line and we know how to find the equation of this line if it is making some coordinates on x and y axis both so here we can write it is as x1 y1 and it is as x2 y2 and how to write the equation of a line passing through two points we know that here we can write y minus y1 equals to y2 minus y1 Divided by x2 minus x1 and multiply by x minus x1. This is general formula to find the equation of line passing through two points. Now y1 is what zero and x1 x2 we have all, so we can write here y equals to y2 minus y1 is 2a and here we will have x2 minus x1 is minus a and here we will have x minus a. So what is the equation of line we got? We got y equals to a minus x. y equals to a minus x so here we have got the variation of y with respect to x so for this kind of integration what we'll gonna do we'll gonna vary y from 0 to this line from 0 to this line line is a minus x and after that we'll put the value of x so what we can do we can write q net as integration of alpha x dx and integration of y dy and here we have limit of y from 0 to what 0 to a minus x so we can write here 0 to a minus x now we'll have integration of alpha x dx 0 to a minus x so for that we can write here y square divided by 2 and 0 to a minus x we can put the values alpha x dx divided by 2 in bracket a minus x whole square So here we have got the terms in uh, x form only. So we'll write the variation of x, and x is varied from zero to a. So we'll write here the limit of x as zero to a. So we'll solve it by alpha by two, and uh, let's expand the bracket. We'll get two a x plus x square. Now we'll do the rest is very easy. A square x minus two a x square plus x cube. dx and the limit of x is from 0 to a so after solving this you will get alpha by 2 and in whole bracket we can write a square into a square by 2 i am writing this directly you can do this uh, step by step and here we'll get 2a into a cube by 3 plus a power 4 by 4 so here you have got this terms alpha by 2 in bracket we have a power 4 by 2 minus 2 by 3 a power 4 plus a power 4 by 4 now rest is very simple algebraic equation you can solve it and you will get the value of q net so we'll move ahead with the third question we have done for linear charge surface charge and here we have volume charge density but here the relation is not given see a sphere of radius r has total charge q now it is given that the sphere where he, we have a sphere and here we have total charge as q spreaded over the sphere if volume density of charge is directly proportional to distance from center it means we have rho is directly proportional to r which is radius of the sphere so we can write rho is equals to kr and here what is k k is some constant so we have to find the value of constant see in mechanics in emt everywhere if we are introducing some constant so we, we need to calculate its value also so don't forget at last we have to put the value of k also but now we don't know then find its charge density we have to find the value of rho which is kr we know but we don't know the value of k so ultimately we have to find the value of k so for that what we can do we can use this term here we have total charge as q so we can write rho as dq over dv and we can write this as dq equals to rho dv 
and q net which is the total charge can be written as dq and here we can write rho dv so we have q we have rho and what is the formula for dv in case of a spherical coordinate we have the formula for dv as r square sin theta dr d theta d phi so we can write q as what is the value of rho from the above discussion we can write k into r and r square would be r cube here we have dr sin theta d theta and d phi now we can solve this uh, separately we can do q as let's k take common outside so r cube dr into sin theta d theta into d phi so we know that for a sphere phi varies from 0 to 2 pi theta varies from 0 to pi and r varies from 0 to capital r here we have radius of sphere so we can write 0 to capital r so we can write q as k into r power 4 divided by 4 into this whole term uh, you can directly uh, remember this this whole term would be 4 pi so we can write 4 into 4 cancel so what we can have q equals to k r power 4 into pi so we can write k as q divided by pi r power 4 so from previous discussion we have rho equals to k r small r so from this value of k we can write rho as q divided by pi r power 4 into small r so here we have got the value of charge density volume charge density okay this is what we have to find the charge density so that is it for today guys we'll meet in the next one and in the next video we'll going to talk about some special cases to find the electric field until then best of luck and take care